February 13th work session for the Gearhart City Council is now in session. Okay. To start off, thank you, Jeez, both of you for being here. I appreciate it. I want to thank Chief Gregory for the public safety building name again. Unfortunately, now I'm going PBS. <laughs> I'm just going. <laughs> I wrote that so many times today. I just. All right. First off, is going to be Preston giving us his rundown on stations. Well, I haven't been able to get a hold of the guys down in the hail and figure out whether or not they're on a on a compacted engineered field or whether they're on highlands with a cap. But I know that the new church um, jail up there it is. You know, I mean, I think I think that when they built that for the for the uh, youth center or whatever it was, that uh, or youth detention center, that uh, they had the the county had the foresight. So we were in seismic zone. And so they were able to put a power cap on it and build a steel structure on top to sway with it. Whatever it is comes our way. There they happen to be. I mean, I think if we get an eight, seven, or eight, or nine, or something like that, we get flooded in. So it's such everybody else, including the Bonneville Dam. So but that's what we might, my idea is to do the same thing right out here. And we've had um, Alex Heidel from uh, the recycle place up there by Lewis Park. And he's determined once, once you take the roof off, and then collapse the building in on itself. I don't work with a cat, and that would be most of your. Build the reason of a couple of feet. Um, you know, every I mean, every ferry dock in British Columbia and and Washington is on pile, piles of the pile caps. So 
San Francisco, they built steel structures down there and they, they get a lot more earthquakes than Oregon's ever had. And uh, the advantage of building a steel structure on top of a pile cap is the fact that it, it will move with the, with the uh, whatever it is that the, that the land does. So, you know, the, just the size of the building is to be determined and, and what sort of, uh, I don't think you want to put any brick or any hard, you know, facade on or anything like that, you know, because it's going to collapse. So, if you could do maybe a T11 board and back. But anyway, um, I don't know, I haven't talked to the guys on it yet. We should see what the, whether or not they run pilings or, or whether they just on compact to fit. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody's wanting to compare the new station that Banks built out on Highway 26. That's, you know, yeah. that is a horrible comparison. I mean, they had donated land, donated lumber from, from Hampton. Mill up there, they had you know, donated electricians, they had donated everything. So, you know, their cost is, and they needed that building because they, I mean, their district is huge. And that one there gets them on out on Highway 26, you know, for the car rates. They go all the way to basically to, you know, where the rest area is on Highway 26. East and they go all the way to summit of the highway six down there, going in kilometers. So they go all the way to Yam Hill and they go, you know, all the way into Hillsborough. So it's a huge district. You know, I don't know, you know, it's going to be determined, but up to the council or people that are going to be residing in that long after I'm gone. To figure out what size we actually need. My personal feeling is this I mean, this goes way back to when, I mean, even before I joined the fire department, when people used to be able to live in town here because the, because the uh, you know, land, land prices were reasonable and everything like that. But, you know, I mean, two people working and of the age where they're where they're going to volunteer. I realize that Chad keeps saying that you guys get volunteers and everything like that, but I mean, the average price of, of a home here in your heart, if you, if you don't, if you don't count the front there, is somewhere between six hundred and seven and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Uh, you know, I just don't see even even when Bill Eddy took over, we talked about where the future volunteer firefighters are going to come from. And it's just gotten it's just gotten more and more expensive here in the city to live. So I mean congratulations you guys that you know you keep it up. But if you guys think you're gonna to go to a paid department, I'm not in favor of that at all. I mean if you're gonna to go to a paid department you might as well emergency set. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Preston. Okay, Chad, we're going to go straight into learning how to vote. Yeah, this will be fun. And I, I just want to tell anyone who's on Zoom, even though you can't speak during a work session, please participate in learning to vote and voting. Okay, so nobody's on yet, uh, Mayor. Uh, I'll let you know if they do. Who is CS? That's Chad Sweet. This can see the right one. <laughs> Chad that. Sweet. Stop. Okay, and if Chrissy, you could give me sharing. Working on that. There we go. Don't go there. It's not sure. It's <laughs> I don't know. 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 I don't know.
I don't I I couldn't believe it. Okay. This so this uh Chief Como. Oh, no. <laughs> oh I don't. Okay. Yeah, that should be fine. That I'll do that again. Okay, so this is something that Chief Como brought up to us. It was a, a polling program. And the mayor brought this to us as well, you know, talking about these uh, remote control setups where we get from another town and the people that were attending the meeting could could vote on things that we asked them. This is a fancier version of that. What it does is it allows us to poll a group of people, anybody with a phone or a computer. And we can set this up a million different ways. I'm gonna go through a few of the different types of questions that it has on there. But essentially in a town hall situation, like what we wanna use it, people will be able to log in. We're gonna show them some questions and they're gonna be able to answer those on their phone. We will be able to collect that information, save that information, and report on that information in all sorts of different ways. So the people that are participating can be anonymous. On your phones, you don't have to put your name, Chad Sweet, on there. You can put whatever else that you want on there. So it can be anonymous, or we can require that people sign up and not be anonymous. We can control how many times people can ask answer the questions. Some questions might, we want all your ideas, so put in as many as you've got, right? The idea is to get into this and ask the community a question that they can answer in the town hall and answer while they're on Zoom. And one of the features about this is we can leave part of this open for a survey. After the thing, we're saying we're gonna leave this open for a week. Please keep that, keep this uh, uh, information. <laughs> And you can go in anytime you want and answer a survey based on did you think the town hall was helpful? Do you what more information would you want on the town hall? We can leave that open for a little bit, report on that. We can give that to the council and you can make decisions for future, future uh, meetings. So it's pretty interactive. And I set up a, a test poll that hopefully is not very, um, uh, 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 doesn't get people's energies up on anything. The way that people will sign up to this is essentially, you start at the way beginning, the questions that come into this, and I think the mayor's gonna talk about this a little bit later, will come from the council. What questions do you wanna ask your people? We'll discuss those questions, we'll make sure they're worded correctly, we'll put them into this uh, program, and then when we're having the town hall during the process, we can open up the question and have people go ahead and sign in and reply to what they feel. So, when we get people in the room and on the screen, in order to get them set up on this, we will put up a QR code or a website. You can go to either. A QR code is something that you can use in your camera app. Usually, even from this distance, you might be able to point at that QR code from here with your app. It'll show you a website. You click on that website. Sometimes you have to zoom in on it. Yeah, let's see how it works. So, and I was going to mention that you just. Right. Yes. If you want to be anonymous, what do you do? Okay. Anonymous or Frank, anonymous or Bob. Joe Tomorrow. Joe Tomorrow. Josh. 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 Uh, yeah, I think that we're able to do some reporting based on that. So are we going to an ice cream shop right away? And do, do uh -huh. take That's that? where it's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't touch it. I told you it was not going to be very uh, okay. dramatic. Right. right. No, I just want to know that yeah. it's in the... See, that you're on the right... Yeah. The right, yeah. right, the right, right. Side. Side. right. Ice cream shop. Okay, okay. now. Yeah. Right. So you said we're going to update all of that until you get it. No, I won't. Yeah, you guys have it? And Jennifer, it's how are you doing? It's Lovia. Right. Welcome to the presentation. Yes. Okay, great. Let's I have to make it a little smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom out. Right. And then it's just asking for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess it's continuing with that. Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. It says no. And you're in the town hall. You're not tied into the city's traffic. He doesn't have internet. I don't have city internet. Oh. So then, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, can you just, well, yeah, just website in them? It she doesn't is. need to be on the internet. She can be on her 3G cellular service. Unless you've set up to where you don't, you don't well, want to like, well, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she can she can have the guest. Can, guess, can, can people right. access the guest? I think we can do that. Yeah, so we could tell them it's to be white side. Thank you. Do you care about that? So you yeah. do you care about white side out? Oh, uh, we have a guest sign. Yeah, that protects us. It's five nine. Is it our five nine five nine? Yes. Five nine. Yes, five That's the guest. Oh, yes, sir. So I think that it would really be important if people when they when they sign in that they actually give their name because because uh, I mean if, if the people want to to be a part of whatever decision that we're making, well then they should they should step forward and, and give give us their name. Otherwise after we come out with with whatever decisions we make based upon the feedback that we get, you're gonna have a whole bunch of Thank people, you. you know, that are complaining that they didn't have a say or anything like that. So you know, the people that don't want to step up, you know, that you can just think, afterwards you can just tell them, hey, look, you know, we gave you plenty of opportunity. As far as I'm concerned, you're a non-entity. There is a way we can do it where we require everybody to sign in, or we have their email address and then we keep their email address and invite them in, and then they're the only ones allowed. That's one way to do it. In a town hall, that would be really difficult. I kind of played out through my mind. Right? The other way uh, we can do this is I can restrict the way that it answers. I can make sure that you can only answer once so that you can answer twice. So that no matter who is in there, they get their vote in there. Because there are a lot of people that say, well, I'm not a voter in here, but I want to tell you what I think. Yeah, absolutely. And we want that. So I wasn't able to figure out a way to make it so that it was just this group of people that were attending that were would be able to do this. But the poll is only open while we're doing it. So it's going to be a come one, come all situation. We're just going to have to figure through some of that. We can put a requirement in there that says, what is your gear card address? And at least that way, we would know that the answers that are coming out are attributed to either a voter or a non-voter, um, or that there's somebody who lives here or just doesn't live here. Uh, so there are some possibilities that we can do that, but the, the best way that I can figure out to use for town hall, so open it up for everybody and just restrict the number of times they can answer it. If you were to ask for their address, would it allow us to keep that information confidential and not going out to the public? Yeah, it wouldn't go on screen and it would only be available here okay. to the team because none of that comes out there. I think that would be beneficial but because then, even, even though we, you know, we might want to hear from somebody who lives in the Mount Hood, they're not ultimately going to make the be of someone who's going to vote yes or no on this. Yeah, we did that so in the last. So we should let them overly influence our decision. It needs to be, our, our decision needs to be catered to what Gearheart wants. Yeah. Okay. During the last, the last survey, we did that. We asked them for their address. And then Christy made sure that we knew who was addressed and who wasn't. And we ran multiple reports on it based on all of that data. They let me know not. They registered and they're not. You know, that sort of thing. It helped tell a story. How, and how time intensive. And if they're, pro if they're property owners, I mean, if, there may be one or two people on the front that even, you know, live here year round. Yeah. But, you but know, I they're going to they're going to be they're going to be majorly affected. I think that there, that's why the balance between what, what the mayor is thinking about the um, the advisory bill is going to be you know potentially one of the tools that we use, mm -hmm. right? Certainly, and that will tell us some good information on the voters. This will give us as much information on everybody. It's not going to be perfect. I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it a little bit more. I'm just learning about this, and I'll call them to see if there is a way for them to make it easily during the sign-up process to say, "What is your address?" It will not appear on anything, and then they can put that in. You know, one, two, three, anywhere, and at least so we can forward it. And then, and then you'll weed out the people who don't have a vote. You're not going to weed them up. No, that's a, it's about Gerhard citizens, and it doesn't mean you have to be a voter or a non-voter. You just have to be a property owner. 
Well, if you live in Gear Hart, you don't have to be a property owner. All we're doing is gathering information from the people that are going to be participating in this. When we have the uh, advisory vote, that is a more determining factor because those are the people, because they're registered, will be paying for it because they'll be voting on it. So somebody that has a two and a half million dollar house up on the front there, okay, is going to be more effective as far as their taxes are concerned than somebody that's doing it out here. On, what, what were all the names that Southbury Hay gave all the neighborhoods in this town? Yeah, well, you know, Bailey Lane. Beer flats or whatever it is. Bailey Lane. Beer flaps. Beer, beer flats. Beer flats. Yeah, I think that, you know, and then it's who the taxes are affecting the most. That's what I'm Paying the most and affecting the most, just depending on how much you make as well. And if we, we couldn't do a vote for everybody in town because that just doesn't work that way. And there are people that are upset that, hey, I own a town here. How come I don't get a vote? Well, I mean, if I own five houses, does that mean I get to vote for the president five times? I think that the people that I think that the people that own up on the front are, are more optimized than that. Yeah, and that's why I think that the town hall section and then the surveys we send out should be open to everybody. Yeah, but I think when we get down to you know who's who's registered to vote, yeah, I mean we've got a lot of people. Yeah, I mean we're somewhere between eleven and eighteen hundred people. Okay, but the, the eleven and eighteen hundred people. Are the people that you know that, that are registered to vote inside the city, right? Yeah. The people up on the front, or or you know the, that own a condo or something like that that aren't registered to vote, their taxes are going to be affected just the same as as somebody that lives, you know, right next door here. Yeah, I don't want to agree with that. Street or That's something that I say yeah. house is going to help me up with. You know, they're, I mean, they're they're. There's sizable chunk in the game is going to be in the game. So I think for the purposes for this, we're talking about keeping it open. One okay. vote a person or one vote an entry, whatever you call it. Yeah. Okay. The, the question you know, I think you should gather, still gather addresses in case in the future we decide that we need to go through and correlate this information based on a set of criteria like, okay, how do the people, people that live or own property here or have some connection to the city, how did they feel versus the people that live in that or the region or whatever? Yeah. You have We're gonna have to have some discussions about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Right. And the more information that you want is just the more that uh, detailed we get on our surveys. We got pretty detailed in the past on our surveys. We received a lot of them and we hand wrote them all in. We, Christy, you know, all the comments, all the data, and then we're able to run that data through all sorts of different ways. I guess it wasn't very accurate, but it helped, you know, and it showed us, you know, that it, it we'd be able to run, yeah, we can talk about those parameters. Not sure how to get there. But for this purpose, showing us how this works so that we can bring the town hall folks together on these decisions and how this works. Now, what I was doing is I accidentally pushed a piece of paper on my my mouse and forwarded the presentation. It usually, your first screen is going to say, hey, presentation is yet to start. Okay, um, ready to go. So here's the first question. So we'll say, okay, everybody, we've got to log in. We've had people come around, help them get logged in, all that sort of thing. If this works right, as I change the screen, your phone should change as well. Okay, okay. take a look at your phone. It's on your phone. Sorry. Oh, it's Question one. A star survey. So this is a multiple choice question. We give them the choices. We get the we 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 go and everybody's registered for the choices we've given them. There's no opportunity for them to go in. So are you hitting yes or no? Can we change our minds? You can't be no, no, just wonder. So the number one says, where should the new no, shop be located? Huh? That's why I did that too, because it acts on advanced if you refresh. So if you just pull down until it refreshes, then it'll come yeah. current where we're at. So that's because I made a mistake. Pull down from the very top of your screen. There you go. 
Okay. No, I already this told you. I just wanted to know if I want to Oh, but I want this that answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is asking me. Okay, thank you. Well, maybe I should go to the negative, so it just shows. <laughs> when I refresh it. Okay, so I, I already see a change I'm going to make on the ice cream store situation. So see, now things are starting to change. People are starting to put in. Are you guys doing this? Okay, yes, and Jennifer, did you yeah, get it? I just voted, yeah. Okay. So that is, of the people that are in here, we can sit here and we can discuss this outcome. We can discuss to see if we need any more information. There's 10 of us, 10% unsure, 10% percent no, that's one each, and the rest are all 80%. There is a way I can change that to numbers and not percentage. Yes, I like numbers. numbers. Yeah. I like numbers. We, numbers? I like numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers is good. Well, at least we'll have a count of yeah. how many people are in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> and you, because they like the one we got. <laughs> And you can't go to the next question. You can't do anything until I hit the next slide. Okay. Okay. Right. So we have the discussion in the community. We've asked some more questions. Hey, what is, you that said I'm sure what the hell? Anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now we're going to go to the next question. This is a survey, an official survey, location for the new ice cream shop. And you can see on this thing going, I've got four surveys underway, two surveys have been completed. So you guys in this have, room already? Yes. I didn't know. I only remember participating in what? You start already voted. Oh, you're moving ahead then, huh? She said we're talking to the class. You want to hear it? She's that one that needs so to read the special ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> <That's kids. laughs> oh, so then I got this survey. So for those of you that are still underwear in your survey, there is once you make your choice, there is a finish button. Right. Ten is free beach approach. Oh, oh submit. I study the beach. Submit survey. Right. It's not yeah. finished. Submit oh, right. survey. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So hit submit survey. So we got one left waiting. Yeah. Who's uh, not surveyed yet? Has anybody not participated in? You're good. I'm good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. got a check mark? Well, no. Okay. So why am I? Why don't I have a check mark? Yeah. So you, you guys, you guys know, should go sign up. Am I doing well? Yeah. You submit it and then you got to scroll up. No, no, you have to no. scroll. Oh, there you go. Is okay. Yeah, her phone that has the bottom yes. has a toolbar on the bottom where we could see it. So we're going to talk to people about maybe scrolling in and scrolling up. Okay. So it looks like ten surveys completed, zero surveys underway. If I hit the next button, it should show. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work. Okay. And I didn't get to go to that topic. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> so the next thing is, oh, this, yeah. Wait, we're going to come back to that. We came there. It came back. It came back. back. Uh, open ended. What ice cream topping? We're going to go to this. What ice cream? This is an open ended question, meaning there is no right answers. You got to type. You got to type. <laughs> Did I not type? <laughs> Don't worry, Mayor. We won't let you participate in the. Uh, oh. How do you, how do you, no, never mind. NUTS is pretty simple. Now you see what's going on is that the screen is being populated with the words that you have been choosing. So this is an opportunity to ask the group a question and to see what people think. Sweet. You can respond to Oh, I do too. No, I yeah, I've got it set up where you can actually add two in this oh, one. Wow. If you want. Down here. <clears throat> oh, <what? laughs> I don't know, but I think that caramel is the right one. But anyway, that's just me. So there's ways that I can show this. I'm going to go back to the previous screen where we had the survey. There is an option for me to say on the next screen, show me the results of the survey. Other than that, then there, this is set up accidentally to be 
not show everybody the results of the survey at this time. And we can go back and do reporting and look at the survey. I would change that so that when you make your survey questions about you know where you want the uh, where you want the ice cream store to be, then the next screen will show what everybody did. That was an error. I'm learning things as I'm going. Okay, so we got all those answers. We've got them on the screen. I can do things like, well, let's talk about mini Oreos for a minute. I really like mini Oreos too, but you know, this one's a very interesting idea because actually caramel is the best. It is um, not. Do you want mini Oreos for the dairy queen? Caramel is worth that. Caramel is worth that. Okay. So that is an example of an open-ended question. This next one is an example of a QA. If a store could only sell one flavor, what flavor would that be? You have to type again. Polis logs. One flavor of ice cream for one flavor of ice cream. Hey, one flavor of ice cream or one flavor of topping. We can't type. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? This is Polish lock. Okay, hold on just a second. You were just proving that you can lock it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You nailed this with the first question. I'm with Brandon. Sneaky. Oh. Oh, there. Oh. Sweet. Or back. Activity slot. Oh, I've got a little bit. It's still hot. Because it's good. Because it's good. Well, was it unlocked from the poll? No. No, it's flashing back and forth between an open ended question and. Between the last question. Yeah, because I keep going back and forth. I don't know why that locked. Okay, so I'm going to stay here. So we'll work on that. Q&A locked. I'm going to try it again here in a minute. I'm going to go to the next one. Word cloud. <laughs> okay, so this is, what this is, is this is audience participation. Hey, guys, everybody just tell me how ice cream makes you feel. Or we can ask a question about, do you think that this was helpful? Or give me a word about this town hall. You know, do you think it was successful? Do you think it was, wasn't? So you see how the words are coming up that you're typing? Somebody go ahead and type in uh, cold as well. Somebody else do cold instead. Yeah, did you know you stopped sharing your screen? <clears throat> nope. So what? Oh, so it, what, it's telling me you've already responded once. Okay, hold on just a second. Uh, share screen, Zoom. So it's letting me give you more words. Share screen, yeah. <laughs> you have all great screens. You it makes you feel a lot of things. <laughs> okay. Can you see that? Keep putting words in. Just put another, you know, somebody put another word in, and you'll see, the rest of you will see a change. So these are all the words that you guys are putting in, but two people said cold. So it made that word bigger. No. It'll identify the words that people say that are similar and make those a little bit bigger to give you an idea of what the crowd might be thinking. Otherwise, these words are in here. Now I've seen this used at the state, the state of Oregon did a planning um, a thing. They asked everybody, okay, what do you think about this new planning law that's coming into place? And people started typing into it crazy, too much, way too much information kept, you know, or uh, too, much, too much required information came up and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they took this and they took it home and they looked at all the words and how many times people said it. And it gave them an idea of what the people were thinking. Okay. Um, and I think that is it. 
So from there, we put grouchy. It said less grouchy. Oh. It said slightly less. Still grouchy, but less grouchy. <laughs> okay, so those are some of the type. I'm going to create a report real quick and an executive summary based on what we just did. I'm going to do all the questions and create this report. We had five activities, 10 different people participated, 12 average responses, 78% average engagement. Multiple choice. Does the city of Gearhart need a new ice cream store? 8% said yes. Where should the new shop be located? Yeah, I'll check this. Looks like four said 40% should be a 10th Street Beach approach, 50% of City Hall, zero for the hills to the east, and one at the Gearhart at Seaside Airport. Check that. <laughs> that is remote. Uh, open ended question. What ice cream topping do you think would be a hit among enthusiasts? All of these came up. QA. If you could only sell one flavor of ice cream flavor, what would it be? That one was locked out as well. So I'll fix that. And here are the, in one or two words, how does ice cream make you feel? Kind of shows that information. So we were able to capture all of the responses. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely great. There are about 15 other different styles of questions. We can show them pictures. Which one do you like on here? We can show them graphs. Hey, do you think it's too expensive or too big? Point on the graph where you want it. We can do a lot of different things. And it doesn't take that much time. Um, responses. Uh, and it can be branded with pictures and do all that. It's locked down, and then we have all the information to move forward with. And if we do all of our town halls like this, we can track that information as well. Hey, did we do a better job? We can do a survey at the very end of this that says, hey, on your phone it shows, when you go home today, do a survey on this town hall. Did you think there was enough professionals there? Did you think that there was the right type of architect? You know, whatever it is that you wanted to say, they can go home and do it. We can give them two or three days. Two or three days, we print out that, we get that council, that information, and it gives you an idea of what people are thinking. Like, so are we coming up with those questions at the end of the town hall? I'm just trying to make sure how that's going to... Yeah, I think it would be something that, what, what, is the, uh, what does the council want to know after we finish with the town hall? You can come up with three or four questions. I'm going to keep it very long. You know, did you feel it was the right time of day? Did you feel, you know, is there a better time? In reading your, your document, is this your document, Carrie? It is. So it looks like, number one, you want us to provide between now and then for come up with five questions max that we think would be pertinent and should be asked? That's right, yes. And if you look at the list, five questions, and we'll go. We'll get them to Chad, and Chad and I will go over them to see that none of them are repeats. And if they are, we'll contact you. But these are five questions you feel the audience should participate in talking about and um, voting on, just so we have an idea of what they're thinking. So information we feel we need to gather from them. Right. In order to proceed. Got it. But I, I think we should have a set of questions that we ask every time until we um, I'd like to know how many people have participated in the vote at each meeting, the previous meeting. That way we know that if we've got, let's say, 40 people that have been here three times, that's one thing, but I want to incorporate as many people as we can in their responses because if we don't get a diversification, then all we're going to be doing is having one set of people making these answers and right. we need to incorporate as many people as we can into Just this. Just another reason for us to capture names and addresses. Well, so uh, how are we going to reach the people that aren't at the meeting? I will have the people that are not at the meetings. So if we use this polling that during our presentation, we're presenting something at a town hall and 
warning information for people to respond to that presentation or that section of presentation. After every section of presentation, we can put up a poll question and the people that are there can participate. If we get people in your heart that can't make the meetings, they're otherwise indisposed, there is a way to set this up and this, to allow them to take the poll, but they're not going to be at the town hall to understand the, um, the questions and the reasons why. But this system is set up to be able to put a survey together. And let's say we keep the survey free, you know, in the middle or easy to answer on very simple questions that we can give to people that weren't present and allow them to get their, their, their words in. We can do that. We can enable this poll, put it on the, the blog. It'll give them both that website address and that QR code. Say, hey, over the next week, when you have a moment, we just finished our town hall. Here's a survey that we did in here. We want your participation too. We will not know if we've got multiples, right? Because people will be able to sign with different users. We do, we are able to track if it's like, if, if Justine used her phone for five or six answers, just kept logging off, logging back in, getting back in and doing more answers. We can see what's called a Mac address, which shows that hey, compute, this computer over here answered this seven times. So we could throw away some of that information. So yeah, check that. Yeah. But in the past, we haven't had too many duplicative answers. Oh, in our so many citizens did we reach with the blog? We have uh, over 2,000 people on there. So pretty much everybody. A lot of people, but I don't, you know, a lot of those are also, out of, there's some out of town that just don't live or work here or anything. They're just interested in what's going on. But yeah, I think we've got over 2,000 now, and it's pretty good. The paper version of this would work so well, but we could send out a paper, a paper flyer that says, here's the QR code and the website, and here's what we're asking. Put that in the, you know, whatever water or do another mail out. They can go in, answer the questions, and we'll just be collecting the information automatically and run the reports however we want. There is nobody taking paper versions of this and entering it into the computer. And I would say that the amount of people that don't use computers or wouldn't be able to do this is a very small amount. There is going to be some. Will the public be able to see the results online? Not if we don't allow them to during a period of time. I think that there is a way to put like a summary on there or to make a report available, but it would be information to go to the council and the council can make it all available. So would it be possible at the town hall when we were going to do this for those people that aren't going to, that are going to have left their phone outside or just don't have the ability to do it on their phones, are we going to have in the town hall paper copies for them to, to capture their information? You know, that's one way we can get more people to participate if they don't feel like they can do that. I wouldn't have a problem if we had a paper copy. Yeah, what would it take with a paper copy if there weren't very many of them? Information would come in later. Like, because we had, we had what, like a thousand surveys come in during the last one. It was some good information in there, too. And it took Christy a lot of hours because she had to hand type all the comments in as well. If we keep that in mind and do something simple, I, we should be able to do paper copies somehow. Well, that would have to be for a limited amount of people. I mean, yeah. most of the people are going to come in ready. I was going to say another word, but uh, ready to do something like that. And we can make sure that we get that word out. Mm -hmm. Hey, Josh, have you guys typed up your letter for the fireman's wall? Um, it's not finalized, it's in process. Okay. It might behoove you. To put in there that we're talking, the city is talking about because you get a lot of you get a lot of your funds from those people up on the front. I mean, they all come down for the fireman's ball. Everybody that you know that has some residents yes, here comes down for the fireman's letter goes out to the district and to the city limits. So there'd be a lot of letters that get sent out that's not in the city limits, though. Because we send it to the our whole fire district. Okay, but in there you can you can designate for the people that own property in the city itself we are conducting you know town hall meetings and a certain surveys and stuff like that to get your input as to what it is that you like to have done 
and you know, if you have any questions, I think I think the word would pop us up or anything like that. But you can email all of them. If we set up some separate survey or something just to collect info or yeah. yeah, you know, because I mean those guys, I mean you, you mail it out to everybody that's you know it's property owner. Correct. Those are the kinds of people, those are the people that I'm actually interested in in getting their feedback. Yeah. Here's my thought. Because this uh presentation was was new to all of us that I had a few problems and other people might have a few problems. So I think in the town hall, it would be quite imperative to have some, uh, not, well, a few people roaming around as helpers, just like Chad needed help, and I needed help, and, and it, Dana didn't get to the bottom of her screen. It would be really nice because otherwise we're gonna be flooded with people raising their hands going, I don't know, and I couldn't get online, so I don't know if that's gonna be a problem. So that's my thought, is that we should have some helpers to help the audience with this, because it's new to all of us. Totally agree. Well, I don't know where you're going to get them. Uh, well, yeah, so I mean, these guys, those of us that will be in here, we can, we can um, walk around. Yeah, if I train two or three people on really well, you know, really well how to use this, then we can help them out. For sure. Good idea. So, are you going to have another trial run, trial run before the before the big meeting? Yeah, I ran this a, a couple of times. It's the first time I came up with that lockout situation, mm -hmm. so I got to figure that out. And then the other one is there was one question that didn't work. There's one question in there is a Q and A that says, "Okay, what toppings would you like to have?" And people start putting in those toppings. And once you get those topping lists on your phone, you can start upvoting the one that you like the most. So it's Mm -hmm. participation with people voting on the information that's coming out from the people. So if we say, you know, what color should we paint the public safety building? Pink comes up there, green and orange and brown like the like the water treatment facility. You'll see people liking a specific thing and it'll go to the top during that process and during the survey. Okay. So it's not just questions that we ask you, but it could be things that come from the, the, the people if we set it up that way. They like it 10 times. No. No. Yeah, but we're not going to be getting that technical right now, are we? No. <laughs> no. We'll keep it very simple. Multiple Good. choice answers, I hope. If it's simple, I could walk around because I got on um, using the, uh, are those case sensitive word letters? No. Thank you. I, I made them that way so that they kind of stood out so people could read it. That's the way that pull EV does it too, capital P, capital E, to make it easier. I put it on the lowercase, it was hard to read. So it, it, it can go in any way. So people can make, as long as they get pullev.com backslash whatever we name it. Right, okay. WS1 is what you put in? Work session one. Right, okay. Well, people need to be on the internet to work this. The internet or on their three and four G from their cell service, All right. one or the other. Alrighty. Good. I think that was really helpful. Okay, we'll, we'll practice. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't get to vote on the, my favorite ice cream. <laughs> Shows that we had an eye response. Mr. Charles. Here we go. That was when we were locked out. Yeah. 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 You know, three or four do some answers in there and go, you know, that's a really good idea. I see it on the phone and I go, I like that one. Mm -hmm. And then they upvote the information that the public has provided. And that's kind of an interesting way to go. So there's a million ways we can do this. Crafting the questions that the council wants to know about. That's up to you folks. It's not, you know, staff is where is it coming from? So you come up with your questions, we'll craft them so they're very simple and easy to answer. And then we'll get the best information that we can out of them. We'll talk about how that works and we'll put it up and we'll give this a shot. Lots of people are using this, Coca-Cola, PNG, all sorts of places. So yeah, it's kind of neat. All right, so I'm gonna meet with Chad. We're gonna come up with a set of questions that we're gonna ask at every session to start off with. And that's, have you ever voted in a town hall before? 
I know this will be the first one, so that it'll be a no, but it's just so that'll grow to yes, maybe right. in the future. But then we can get, you know, like I was saying, triangulate how how many people are just participating and how many are new on the job. And I'm gonna go over what I I gave you on this piece of paper. You come up with five questions max. If you need more, um just Keep on writing. Yeah. I guess that would be the way to go, and we'll just edit as we need to. Um, and email them to Chad or drop them off. And like I said, Chad and I will go over them and take the ones that are redundant and contact you so you can come up with something else. And I would like everyone to have a three to five minute narrative that they want to speak about the PBS, the PSP. <laughs> you watch assessment speech as well. Yeah, you know, I've had kids <laughs> and grandkids. And uh, Dana's going to have a PowerPoint for us during the next session. Are you? Let, yeah, let's let's talk about that when you're done. Okay. And please engage as many citizens as you can about what we're doing here and why we're doing it and the need to vote and participate. Okay, Dana, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, um, so the document that you have that says draft on it, please do not disseminate that. Please don't discuss it with anybody. The contents don't pass it out, don't send it off. Um, it's, uh, when you, I have not even, this is something I've been cobbling together for the past week or so and driving these guys crazy, asking them for information and incorporating it into this. I was up very late last night typing this. I was up very early this morning typing it. I was a little loopy. And so I have not even yet done a grammar check on it or even actually read through the entirety of it to see if it makes sense. But I printed it off really quickly for you to give you an example so that I can illustrate for you what I wanted to speak about. Um, so it seemed to me at the last town hall meeting that we had a, still a lot of questions um, that pertain to why do we need this and foundational questions that would help us garner support and, and um, I think providing more information to folks would help them understand our need and then help them make better decisions when we're doing these these polls. They're at, they're making more informed are giving us more informed feedback rather than just you know based on on something that they don't necessarily have an understanding of so what i started typing up was a preliminary needs assessment this is in no way meant to be the final needs assessment um i, I strongly feel that later on we'll have to have some professionals that really can dig down into codes and and know have a lot of experience and expertise in building fire stations or remodeling fire stations and, and police departments to advise us. But this is just a preliminary, this is a list of, of where we're at and, and maybe compare it to what we need. So starting with a little summary and all of the things that you see highlighted on there are things that I need to go through and verify. Um, that's the reason they're yellow is because I was like, okay, I need to double check numbers on that. Um, but what I started off with, if you look at the document, is it's um, a summary of you know how many households do we serve, what it, what does it look like, and um, discussing that it's we're talking about the Gearhart Volunteer Fire Department, Fallfield Police Department, but also a, a key player in this Gearhart Rural Fire Protection District because the decisions that we make will impact them also, and there are some people that have a don't have an understanding of the role that the Gearhart Rural Fire Protection District or the Reef Here to Station plays in our operation. So it discusses a little bit of that and, and how that belongs to the Reef Here to Station belongs to them. And if we were not to have an IGA with them or if that were dis district to, to dissolve, then we would lose uh, control of that building. Um, then goes on to why uh, why would we need to make changes to the police departments, what some of the codes are, and some of the information that I've received from the police department and that I've observed myself as far as what changes and updates need to be made there. Um, talks a little bit about why we need them. Also, same thing with the fire facility. I have a lot more to work on in the fire facility. There's a lot of information out there about what fire facilities need. There are a lot of different codes. 
Um, NFPA, the, um, the U.S. Fire Administration, FEMA, everybody has, has a little bit of information. OSHA has some, some standards. ADA has standards. So there are a lot of standards to kind of wade through. And I'm, I'm not pretending that I'm going to get into all of those, but I'm going to, I hope, have enough information for people to understand overwhelmingly that we, we have a problem, that we have a problem that we need to fix one way or another. Um, what I'm not going to suggest is what is the solution to that problem. I'm going to leave that open-ended because that's information we need to get back from them. But I think that once people have reviewed all of this information, it's going to be clear, pretty clear to them what the solution or at least what the solution should be or should entail. It's going to discuss some of the common questions that we've been receiving, like why do we need to do training or why do we need a training facility? Um, why do emergency responders need a locker room? Um, why, why can't we just merge with Seaside and, and solve our department? So um, what, what would be things we'd have to consider if we were to go that route? Um, so this is, like I said, this is not a complete document. And if it starts, if you get through it, you find a lot of grammar mistakes. I, I apologize for those. But again, I, I wasn't even able to do a grammar check on this before I'm putting it out to just give you a little idea of where I'm going with this. I would like your feedback on this. Um, some of the information I'm still trying to get, and I think that probably uh, Preston could help me with a lot of the background on the fire department, some answers to questions that people have not been able to answer for me yet that I still have. Um, but I also, in, in doing this, I have the the fire department and the police department sent me some pictures illustrating some of the things. Like, for example, this is a picture of the floor when we had a rainstorm last year that flooded. And you should keep in mind that they have a lot of electrical cords running around in there. And um, I'm not an expert on such things, but I'm thinking that electric cords and flooding cords do not mix. Nor does it meet the standards that I'm I'm learning about that say that you're supposed to have drains in the floors. I mean, so. There'll be a discussion of that in there. Um, and if you don't mind, I'd like to take my portion of the discussion and I will probably put these into some kind of a PowerPoint so that I can illustrate some of the things. And then I would like you guys to, to be available just like we were last time to jump in and answer questions when, when people ask me questions that I don't have the answers to. So, so is this the, what you have given us, this preliminary needs assessment, Will this eventually go out to the public when it's finished, when you're done? I mean, is that what this is for? Well, that's what I would ask you all. Would you, would you like me to create a document that we could provide to the public? Because I don't think, I'm not going to include in there any safety or security concerns that we wouldn't want to broadcast. I wasn't sure. Just, I just wanted to know that this was a draft. If this was a draft, what is it preliminary to? Yeah, it's, I, I would like to have it be something that we could make available to the public. That could answer their questions, but also, if, if not, if you if you don't feel comfortable releasing it to the public once it's done, then I would like at least for you all to have it so that you all have answers to the questions that people will ask, and so we're giving out consistent answers. Sure. And also, I'd like to add to this if, if it's required. If you come up, if somebody asks you a question that's not in here and we all need to know the answer to it, then please send me the the question. Let me do some research. Mm -hmm. Get back to you, and once we agree on an answer, we'll go into the document. It's a wonderful document so far. Yeah. Know, Chad, do you want to go over this really quick? I do. Rise into what you just did. Okay. Uh, so here's the issues that we have: is we're trying to do a better job of collecting public information prior to making some decisions, so you don't have uh, press like that. Uh, so you're trying to make some decisions based on information that we provide. So we want to get into the town halls, and this is more of a question for the council. We want to get into the next town hall and say, hey, do you want a fire station again, right? Is that one of the goals? Is to say, do you believe we need a new fire station? But how do you get into that conversation without the information? Okay? How do you provide enough information so that it looks like you're heading in that direction to provide information, but you're not getting on the design side of things because right. if we start jumping ahead and start getting information out, people are going to be upset that okay, the design's already taken care of. 
Chad already knows where he's going to put the fire station. You know, that conversation is going to happen and all that. And I really want to stay out of that this time. I want to make this as much of a, as you folks do, and if you express to me a people-centric resident involved process. So we do need some information to go out there and find out whether or not we even need a new fire station. Is that true? At the last meeting that we had, almost 99% of the audience raised their hand at that gas chamber. Yeah. That's a small representation. It was, yes, yeah. true. And you can anticipate that we might have different attendees at this one because it's being held at a different time and on a different date. And, and so, you, I, and, and I think one of the mistakes that I have seen in the past with, with organizations that are trying to get, gather support is that they think that they almost want to treat it like it is, it's an inoculation process. You get the answer once and then it, you're good to go and then you continue. And that's not the way this works. You, you might have to go back and repeat information over and over and over again because this is a little, sometimes we get into technical information or things that they just really don't care that much about so they're not going to retain it until you ask them a question where they, oh, wait a minute, what did they say? So you might have to repeat it a lot, but garnering support is our number one job is in, in getting the temperature of the folks and, and making sure that we're not wasting our time. What do they want us to do? What direction do they want us to go? Do they want us to rebuild? Do they want us to do new construction or remodel? And, and if so, what does it look like? All of that kind of stuff is going to come, but right now we just need them to understand there is, in fact, a problem because there are still people that probably think we could just throw a coat of paint over there and change the doors and we'd be fine. I don't think there's so many people in New York. I, I've some, talked to a few. There are some. I've talked to a few. I've talked to them. You know, the interesting thing is to get that information out because in the past we really got beat up with what we didn't know, you know, and what we thought we knew, we'd put out there and say, hey, here's the information. And then people would say, well, no, actually, we don't believe that you need fire stations. And why didn't you even have that conversation from the start? Like we, we couldn't go backwards at that point. We just assumed everybody thought we needed a fire station, right? And that didn't work out so well. So by having this a, some information for the public to be able to learn about our situation and what our current situation is, yeah, we're going to have to get that in advance before we start asking people seriously to need another fire station. I think that what you're going to find out is that what you guys failed to do was to ask the people where they wanted the fire station. That was the number one mistake that you guys made because everybody that I've talked to wants it right exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. right to begin with, okay, ever since 05, we were going to put a station down here, except there's going to be a massive municipal building like Morton has. Yep. Okay. And then after that, you guys had this committee. And it was the tsunami zone. It was it was all this business, you know, the chicken middle deal. You know, okay. So then you went to the park, then you went to here, then you went to there. Nobody ever talked about putting it right back where it was. That was never ever an option as far as the citizens of your are. Right. Okay. So, you know, I mean, that's that's the people, those are the people that I have been listening to. And that includes all the people that live up on the front in Portland or Seattle or wherever they come from. So what was it, like 65, 35? Yeah, I mean, it was overwhelming when people didn't want it. Yeah. You know, there. But there still was a portion of people who did. And that's my concern, is, is that you get the most motivated group to a town hall, and they start giving you all this information that you get on the screen that's really neat. It's the most motivated group. So that's why I like the idea of the multiple attempts, the multiple town halls, the... The, the, the slowly taking people up to make them, you know, understand what it is that we're dealing with, where we need to go, and then cap that off with the mayor's idea about an advisory vote. You know, then when people say, "Well, you didn't ask me," it's like, "Yeah, I did." Four million. You didn't minutes. respond. Yeah, and that's what we want to get to: is to be yeah. able to say that exactly. Right. So we have this situation with some information, some basic information about our problems. Do we need a fire station? But then to go on further, the next steps, the owner representative situation is what's coming into play here. So I have very limited experience with putting together large building projects. I have a $15 million project under my hat in hotel business, I have a $5 million project in the hotel business, and I've got the $11 million that was 
all planned and finished by the time I got there. I just had to help manage that project for the water treatment facility, which even though we had to go to two boats, we still finished under budget for that water treatment facility, right? <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> That's hard to say. That's hard to say. But once you guys came up with the amount and you gave us the plan, we were able to execute it pretty well, right? And we used a construction manager for that. We had a guy come in. We put a trailer up there, and his name is John. He's very good at this. Uh, and he made sure that the plans were being adhered to, everything was being constructed exactly how it was supposed to be done. Uh, he held those people's feet to the fire and he saved us over $300,000. And that was the but what well, we uh, were under budget on that one, minus $4 million. Right? So that was very helpful. But there's a new way of these architecture firms and things are happening because of the current political environment. There is a group of people that have experience, either they were experienced as architects, experienced as project managers, as builders. You know, they go into a firm and it's a project management firm. And not only are they coming in to help you with the construction aspect of it, but now they're coming in and helping us with the portion that we're in right now. They start becoming involved. If the city was to choose to hire them, and I would recommend that we do once we get some RFPs, we hire somebody to come in and who can do certain things to make sure that we're successful. One of the things that a project manager will do if they have their own firm is once we decide that we want to go forward with this project and we want to start working on it, they will help us with their experience because they do this a lot more often than we do, a communication plan. So they'll set up like, okay, how many town halls do you really want? Well, we want 10 town halls. Well, that's an awesome idea. Let's spread, I'm just using the numbers for fun of it. Let's spread these 10 town halls up into there and let's give each one of these town halls a, um, a subject. What is it that we're going to take care of? So that way, when people are looking at the calendar, they can say, well, I'm going to start talking about design of town hall number seven, not town hall number one. Town hall number one, they're trying to figure out whether or not we need a fire station. Town hall number two, they're trying to determine these sorts of things. So they help us with a, with a communication plan. How are we going to get information out to people? They're going to assist with that, and they're going to be at these meetings to be that third person, not the city council, not the Chad. They're going to be this third person that can help us through these processes with their experiences. Those processes include project management, coordination with stakeholders. They can sit back and go, okay, who can miss them from this table? Invite them in, make sure that Dogami is sitting at the table with us as well to have these discussions, and then help us try to put Dogami in the correct town hall you know, for the way that we're wanting to go through. If you want to go through a managed process to get through this so that everybody has an opportunity to think. Project management, coordination with stakeholders. They can help us with site selection and acquisition once we get there. You know, now we set up the stakeholders, now we can start talking about the sites. Right? Budget and cost control, uh, contract administration, design oversight, permitting and regulatory compliance. This is what they specialize in. They would start talking to all these other firms and saying, okay, we're going to need to talk to Gami because we're going to need an exemption from this. We're going to need to talk to the city because we need an exemption from this. And the building code says this. So this is what we're going to have to adhere to. And by the way, the NFPA manual on page 423 says this. Having somebody to be able to manage that. Construction oversight, risk management, and then all the way to commissioning the handover. It's a third party. And this person or group can do that process if it's over, let's say, 18 months is the estimate of what that could take to get through a lot of these things, um, for about, just throwing it out, we're putting the RP together, for about $40,000. It would help them manage the architect, the surveyor, the geotech, the structural, the cost estimator, all the people that we have to hire afterwards to get through this process to make sure we have the best up-to-date information available for our residents and our council is importantly, uh, they would coordinate all of that. And we would hold them their feet to the fire to make sure it gets done. So the way that this process could cost, so, so far people are saying out there that, you know, over this last period of time, we spent $170,000 trying to get to that last election. It's partially true. We spent $170,000 over about five and a half, six years on multiple locations. Just to give you an idea, to go through with a owner representative, and we're gonna need an architect, 
What's the architect going to do? Is the architect going to do a full design build, ready to go design? Of, of th this is one of our challenges. How much money do we have to spend as a city? Right now, in our uh, building management fund, we've got about $250,000, a little bit more than that, to accomplish a project. How are we going to spend that money to get this project to a point to where people can vote on it? So project manager, we get the stakeholders together, we have the conversations, we start talking about the location, decide on the location, right? Then we start designing for that location. Those designs are not complete designs. The designs in order for us to get to a new public safety building will cost us about $70,000 just to get to the basic design level, the amount of square foot, the type of materials that we're using. The type of foundation is going to cost, uh, the foundation, structural foundation will cost about $15,000 in design. Based on preliminary information, they're going to put down some basic designs. We're going to pay $70,000 for one, $12,000 for another, and that still will not get us to construction. The cost of plans to build a $5 million building is about 10%. So it's really about 500,000, right? To get a full set of built plans for a city to build a critical infrastructure building. We can't afford that. So how are we going to get from here to there and get to a vote without having a full set of plans? And city of Oregon can do a full set of plans on a new structure. They can spend millions of dollars doing that. Manzanita couldn't do it. Cannon Beach can't do it. Seaside. They don't have that kind of cash. So we get through this process with a professional, get the initial designs from the architect, get the initial designs from the structural engineer, uh, and then it goes to those designs, go to what's called a cost estimator. Cost estimator, you pay about 10 grand. They take that information, they study how many square foot, how much material, the type of material you're going to use, the type of foundation, how much concrete. They have all those calculations that they can figure out. They know that you are not in Portland, that you're on the coast, so they add a percentage for that because it takes a lot of energy to get builders and supplies this way. They know whether it's going to be a factor, so they're going to calculate that into it. It's amazing the things that you come up and calculate. They'll be able to put together a pretty good cost estimation, and then from there, we got to go to a vote. That's where we got tore up last time. It's like, we don't even know how much this is really going to cost because you don't have the final plans. We had preliminary plans, we had cost estimator plans, we had the structural plans, we did all that. That's part of where we spent our money. But people didn't believe it because we didn't take them through. So an owner representative or project manager, depending on what they call themselves, can help be that third person to make sure that we get all of that value, get to the vote, and have all the information that we need and then that way the community can make the best decision. They participated. Um, and then if we get that, and if it's voted yes, part of that, however many millions of dollars it's gonna cost, is going to be to finish the plans. Take our preliminary design, spend the additional $400,000 or whatever it takes to finish all of those up, make them so that they're buildable. The project manager helps verify all that monitors that the project manager can help us select an architect that you want. We can put requirements on them. We want an architect that's built 10 fire stations. We want an architect that's familiar with this code that has done critical infrastructure before. Who's worked on the coast, knows how to build on the coast, you know, things like that. They can help us do that. The city council will make those selections of who the architect's going to be, who the uh, project managers, the geotech, the structural, and all that, you, you folks will help with that. They'll take us through. Is that clear on an option that you have? Okay, so here is that information. There are estimates on what this cost would be. I had, I had the, oh, oh, this is one. I got it. I had the owner representative estimate what these costs were gonna cost us to get through. And they say that to get done with this project, in about 18 months to get it to where it could go to a vote, you're looking at about 140,000. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind explaining to the council what you explained to me as to why we want to hear this? 
Oh, that is a big question. I think that's something that we should put on the list of something to accomplish is this conversation with the public. So grants, people say, why? And this is my opinion. Okay, so I'm not telling you what to think, or you know, this isn't what I'm putting out to the community. By the way, the difference on this time also is all of this is coming from you folks. So the communication that comes to me, we need to do this or we need to find out this is a discussion that we'll have in the council with counselors as well. But this is coming from you folks. This isn't coming from me. So this, this process will be involving. Grants. People say all the time, we need to write grants, USDA, uh, uh, FEMA, uh, Hudson Foundation, all of these sorts of things to be able to have somebody pay for our fire station. Okay. My thought on that is as an ex taxpayer in Europe, but as a taxpayer where I'm at, I feel like, well, number one, there's no money available for construction. Construction is the most expensive part of any operation, you know, when it comes down to putting these things in. And there's really no construction grants out there. There's leads. You know, if you want to do something that's good for the environment, they'll provide you with some money and some help. There is USDA. USDA does do grants for construction of the fire stations to underserved communities. Gearhart's average, in the during, according to the census, Gearhart's average salary, even though nobody works here, it's a hundred and some thousand a year. That's our average. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to qualify for any low income grants in Gearhart. It's in my mind, this is just my opinion, the citizens of Gearhart have gotten their value out of these two buildings. I'm not recommending that we replace this one, right? This is maybe a remodel. But of the fire station, we've gotten the value out of it. It's time for them to pay for that and to you know, provide this community and its volunteers with the best thing as possible. But there is no grant money out there for construction. There's lots of little grants. There's lots of tiny ones. You can get 10000 here, 5000 there. But in the whole grand scheme of things on a $5 million project, it's pretty small. And we will go for as many of those as we can once we have a headache. But I don't know of any construction grants. Okay. The other thing to, excuse me, but the other thing to that is you have to have a plan. We have a parks plan and we get a parks grant to resurface the tennis courts and the pickleball, of course, because we have a plan. We don't have a plan for the fire department. We don't even have a commitment from the people yet. And we can't apply for any grant because we don't have a commitment from people. That was and one it, of the big things that we fell into. It was like, we looked at some of these grants and we says, well, we'd like to apply for that. And they're like, yeah, well, what does your community think? <laughs> no, they don't want to fire. They don't, they don't want to build in there. You know, like, well, we're not going to give you any money for that. Right, no, you feel like trying to join the Siemens Union, you know. You go, to, you go to a Steven door and you say, I'd like to work for you. And they say, well, you remember the union? Oh, so you go to the union, you got a job? No, it's just a yo-yo. Oh. But you get a commitment from the people and you got a direction, then you can go and knock on everyone's, you can go to FEMA and say, we'd like to have a vertical evacuation tower on top of our fire department. And they'll go, hey, what a great idea. We might be able to save a thousand people. Let's build it. Here's $20 million. And they'll see that the community put in their check as well. They said, okay, we believe in this project. We'll put in story out there, five million. And once we get that commitment, then grants would probably open up to us a little bit better. But you don't, it's a waste of time and energy to go for a grant when you don't have a direction and you don't have a commitment. And that's the big thing in my mind. So anyway, please, is that it? That's it. So we, you, the city council, needs to decide on whether or not you'd like to use a representative um, some people have said that we need to go to yes. some people said that we need to go to the public to ask them that um, you know and that's up to you folks that might be part of what we do during this next town hall is to say hey we, we would advocate for a project manager to, how do people agree to put it up on the screen 
I think that I think that once you explain it to the citizenry, that it's actually going to save the, the taxpayers money in order to get uh, owner's representative or a design build outfit. You know, that the, the amount of money that they're spending on the owner's representative is money very, very well spent. You know, the problem, okay, here's, let's just take the school up here. That thing was a total cluster. Oh, the new school. Yeah. yeah, okay. They don't even have enough outlets in the rooms for the kids to plug their computers in or anything else like that. They're now rewiring that with surface conduit and everything like that, when, you know, an orange representative, you know, would have caught that right to begin with. And the way this is set up is it would be something that would work for the city, not for the architect, yeah. not for the firm of the architect. It would be a different firm that they would be helping us to hire those other positions with their expertise. They almost, you can almost guarantee that they will earn their money back on by keeping us from making costly mistakes, keeping us going in a forward direction, keep us meeting our benchmarks, like thinking you about said. The things we're not thinking about. Um, yeah, and it, 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 that's what they do. And the fact is that we have 13 employees here and five volunteers, one of one, one of whom had to leave his job to, to be here today. Thank you for being here today. But I mean, we can't, we can't do this. We need, we need help. We need to, we need to do that. Well, I, I, I sorry, Dan. No, go ahead. Bob, no, I believe this council understands the value in that, and that will be one of the questions on. Okay, finish your sentence. Next town hall's meeting <laughs> list of questions. Go ahead, Dan. I disagree with Chad. We built the whole library on grants from just bare ground. And we got $300,000 from Meyer Memorial. We got a hundred thousand from Ford. And we built almost the entire thing on grants. There were other things too, but there's grants. And we didn't say it's for construction. We just said we're building another library, you know? So I'm just saying that I just, even though I don't know about grant for fire stations, and I apologize because I don't know that, but we built the whole library on grants. Uh, the difference is that you're building a library, it isn't a, it isn't a safety building. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know yeah, it's hard to say. Stage. It is hard to say. There, there may be some grants out there, but we've hammered it pretty hard. We've had people from the outside look at it. We've had the USDA representatives on the phone. We talked to FEMA, they didn't have anything. And this is over multiple years and multiple times. For this particular type of project, it isn't, but one of the things that we can do is once we have this built on and this commitment, it would be dangerous to go out and say, you know, we're going to get some grants to help do this as well. So we only want three million because we think we can get two million. We may never be able to build it, yeah. but there are a lot of grants for outfitting. Yes. For uh, solar. Yes. And 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 all of that. Uh, there's there there might be grants for like what you were saying there. Uh, a, uh, a vertical evacuation tower. Okay, so we've got this building, we've got this plan. Could we maybe look at putting tower and the additional engineering to get that on? There, there probably would be a grant for that. Yeah, all of the grants that we got were really, really large, but we got grants for like children's furnishings, we got grants for bookshelves, we got grants, and it all added up. Well, and I think so we, we didn't have that. to go out, we didn't have to raise any taxes for that building. We just the whole city just so you never had to go to the you never, never had to go to the community and say hey we need a bond. No, we never did that. We to, didn't need to to do this project. We will. Okay, yeah. I understand that. But yeah. and there's a book called the Oregon Community Foundation Handbook that has all the grants that Oregon foundations give out to other Oregon entities. It's a gold mine, and I know that the library has at least two copies. Yeah, we were going to go to the public and say that well we hope you get grants. It would be hard to get to that book. To where we'd say yes or no. I understand. So it, it, there's a challenge, but maybe in, in, in the owner representative that gave me their information here, um, which is a group I won't name yet because you know they're probably don't want to do this. But they said that a portion of what they would do 
is look at the available grants that are out there mm -hmm. and really help us to do that. We can do that as well. Yeah. And during the planning process, we can enter that information in and say, okay, well, you know, we can get a, a, a fire pole for the police department. Yeah, you know, and for the police department, fire I'm trying to be fair. All I do is bring up fire stuff and right. Raina and them get mad at me. Twenty six years hard, but you know we could go for. I think that we yeah. should, but to get to a vote and to say that we need five million dollars, we're going to have to ask the community for that. Oh, I agree. And I think, I agree. I agree. I think what you need to remember is like hypothetically, let's let's use the last vote as an example. If that were to have passed. $14.5 million and, and stop me if I say something incorrect. But that was the amount that the city would have said, yes, you can take up to that amount. And at that point, we get all of our ducks in a row. We have a project. We're not going to people knocking on their door with a half baked. We kind of want to do this. And they go, wow, you sound like you know what you're doing. And that sounds like a good viable project. I want to give my money to that. That's when you start to get the grants. And then you don't have to take out the full $14.5 million. You can reduce it by $3 million or yeah. whatever your grant is, and that's how you... But he's right. If we start telling the, the folks mm -hmm. around here, expect that we'll get grants and you won't have to pay as much, they're a, not going to vote for the $14.5 million or whatever that it is. Be. And I hope it's not $14.5 million, but it's too soon to even know any of those numbers. But they're, they're not going to give us the okay to get to the point where we could even seriously ask for for grants you need to have a good plan <clears throat> that's just right it is true that is true just take just take the water treat just take the water deal right oh we can do it for seven million no problem at all so we passed along with seven million halfway through you guys mcnally came back to us and said you need another five five million bucks yeah because regulations you know, change now we can't control that no now we're already into it you know, some cities use that as a way to get around. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but no, 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 no. I was not, I mean, I was already hanging off a cliff enough for that last particular fire station thing. So if there was one thing I was going to do is make sure that we could get that project done. And so when I estimated everything, when they estimated everything, I was like, okay, great, we need a contingency. This is, well, you know, we don't know what the interest rates we're going to be. And, this is during COVID and everything was going crazy up. And I said, they said, well, 10% contingency of the grants, fantastic, 20%. I said, do a 20% contingency. They were like, well, that's gonna affect your vote. And I said, because that, that back then I was making this decision. I said, no big deal. I said, they, they gotta vote for what it is that they're gonna get. I'm not, we, we shouldn't say, oh, well, but I think we can do it for this. Because then we're just getting ourselves into another situation. <laughs> Remember, I didn't come up with that plan. You're, you're going to be talking. Everybody's going to be talking feathered if we have to go back to the citizen reading. No, we're, we're not doing, doing that. <laughs> Absolutely not. We've got two minutes, and then I'm calling it quits. Okay. Can I ask a question? Thank you. This is, <laughs> might be a really stupid question too, but I, I'm just kind of wondering: um, Is this majority rules? situation or do we have to have a certain percentage of majority rules or what? decision about even about as simple as do we need a new fire station so we ask that question and we get x percentage that says yes and we get x percentage that are you talking about from the public yeah i thought you were so, asking about so that. if we get a if the if we get a 52 percent that says yes and we get a 48 percent that says no is it majority rules or how? Then you, go, then you keep going back to them until you can yeah. convince that 48%. Yeah. You change the, the percentage. You change your parameters. parameters. There's, a, there's a point to where the city council is not going to want to ask everybody for every move, but there are some very important things that you probably should take a look at and say, that, yeah, we, we want to get a lot of public input on it. But if you get down to, what kind of handrails are going to be on the outside of the stairwells when you start asking permission, you're never getting it done. But yeah, no, but so I think that you need to weigh that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what big picture items do you want the community to answer for you? And we need to get on those pretty soon. Well, you didn't answer my question. So I think initially what the goal of this voting is, is to give us um, to give us feedback, to let us know where we need to do better what, what more information we need to get or what we overlooked. And then uh, it's too soon to say right now 
what it's going to be. But our goal is to get, yeah, a, a vast majority of people supporting one direction and we know which way to go. Right. So right. initially, the I don't think, I think we're going to have, like you said, I think it's going to be close votes initially, and that's going to give us information to then figure out what do we need to do, how do we right. tell us why you what and you're And if we about. need to take another three months or whatever to convince people to bring them along to the same kind of conclusion as almost majority, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's not written in gold that we have to do it and you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna get hundred percent of the back way to grab it. Sure, no. no. Can I just make one observation? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there because it's been said to me by some people. Um, it might behoove us to present some of this information as more of a, we're wondering if we need this or we're thinking along these lines. In, in other words, maybe soften the sales approach a little bit because people are, some people got their backs up, really got their backs up about that. When we all talked at the last firehouse meeting, we all talked about what we need and, and what we'd like to see and stuff. And I'm not saying don't talk about it, but I'm saying people would rather Maybe if we sell it a little bit more gently, as opposed to we're going to convince you one way or another kind of attitude, uh, it's just yeah. an observation I had. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm not paying any help from the council right now. I mean, you folks see that have in your minds that you really want to have a robust citizen participation in this one. The council before you, part of what they were thinking was, all right, of course we want to have a fire station out of the tsunami innovation zone. Let's head that direction. I mean, who wouldn't? I guess we figure that out, you know. I mean, that's oversimplifying that process. So well, I think a big question is do we hire an outside consultant? That's gonna be a huge question because we're gonna be asking them if we can set spend city monies to hire this consultant to help us. We all would like to have that consultant. I'm pretty sure all of us would like to have that consultant on board because it would be very helpful. But we have I to govern. We can take advice, we can take consideration of other people's yes. thoughts and feelings, but ultimately this council is what directs the city. And if we all agree that having an outside entity help us, then we have the right and the obligation to spend that money to help us through this process. Because ultimately we will be saving money and even if it's a few people that got their backs so up, we have to live with that when we make our decision to spend that money. Because in reality, this is the governing entity of the city of Gearhart. And we, I'm not giving that up. I'm taking advice and I'm taking direction from the citizens, but I am not giving up the job I was given. Yeah, I'm not advocating. Okay, and, and so uh, I understand that, you know, I will listen, but a hard sell is not what we're doing. What we're doing is a hard listen. And if they feel I'm, it's a hard sell, then- I'm just giving you feedback. I do, I, I understand that. I, I don't shoot the messenger. Not shooting <laughs> anybody. And we- No, I think he's, he's, he's agreeing with you. I think that I think that what we all should be doing is that when when the citizenry asks us why it is that we need to replace this building over here, um, and I can tell you that over the last three administrations in the city, you know that building there has been very very well maintained. Problem is that it's a CMU block building. You can go over on the west side of that. You'll see where the the concrete block is starting to deteriorate. There are no fill cells in it. You know? So what we need to do as, as counselors is to you know, educate on a one-on-one -on -one basis the reason why this building needs to be replaced. 
Okay. So when they ask you, they say, well, well how, come you, how come the building needs to be replaced? You can just tell them it's, you know, it's well out there in this life. Okay, with that, I'm going to call the meeting adjourned. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and participating. Oh, <laughs> I'll go. Huh? Well, it's not done yet. Do not, again, do not disseminate that. that. <laughs>